Okay. Okay, today we're going to calibrate the nuclear density gauge that we have in the lab. Uh, it's measuring ethylene glycol water. Uh, we've got an electronics unit sitting up above here, which is a Ronin. And we have the actual nuclear gauge itself, which is a nuclear Chicago with the gamma radiation, the flow through pipe, and the scintillation detector at the bottom. First thing we got to do is to drain the pipe. Before we do that, we have to close the shutter. If we don't close the shutter, we will flood the detector with radiation. So we've got to block the radiation first. So that's step number one. There's a key and a lock to lock this thing so that nobody can accidentally expose themselves to radiation. There's the lock. And the shutter has got markers here, the word closed has to appear right there. And there'd be a big block of lead sitting underneath here, which is blocking the radiation from getting through. I'm going to put the lock back in just loosely to make sure this doesn't move by accident. Okay. Um, next thing is to drain it. And what we've got is a pipe down at the bottom here. We're going to close off this valve supplying ethylene glycol to it. Open the drain into the bucket. Whatever is in the meter will drain out. And so that we can vacuum break it, we open up this vent, which is our normal sample point and let it drain freely into the bottle. Okay, I thought you got long enough. Okay. Uh oh, I'm, I'm going still. Okay, so the next step is to, uh, to put in an equivalent absorber. These are equivalent absorbers, Cal 1 and Cal 2. They are blocks of lead that are simulating 70% ethylene glycol on that one, and we're simulating 10% uh, ethylene glycol on Cal-1. Okay. You pull the shutter out, and replace it with the Cal-1, Cal-2 block. That's the Cal-2 position. If you want to go to Cal-1, you've got to slide right across and there's another hole over here, and that's where we're going to start. Cal 1. I'm going to put the lock in to make sure it's in the right position. Okay. So, this screen is not very nice. It doesn't, it doesn't have a really good backlight or anything on it, so you've really got to look carefully. Right now, it's indicating 12% ethylene glycol, so it's not very far out. And can you get that? Okay. In the home, I'm in the home position right now, and I want to go to calibration. So I go down and with the down arrow button until I hit uh, calibration, and then I use the right arrow button to enter it. Once I'm in calibration, it wants me to uh, um, I'm going to go to calibrate, which is the third item down. One, two, there it is. And now I can do a low reference. That's the one I've got in there right now is my 10% ethylene glycol. So I'm going to tell it to do a low reference. And it asks me what that value should be. And currently it is set at 10%, which is fine. That's what it is. So we'll enter that. And then we're going to go up and we're going to actually perform the reference. So now it's going through and it's warning me to get the equivalent absorber in place. And I've done that so I can hit OK. And now it is in the process of calibrating the gauge. It's going to look at the numbers coming back and then ask me whether or not I accept it. So it's come back and it's telling me that it's uh, using 7943 raw counts to represent 10% ethylene glycol. And that looks good to me. As long as it's in the 7,000 region, I'm happy. So I'm going to hit the OK button. 
and it's done that calibration and up at the top it's indicating it's about 9% and that's within the plus or minus 1% accuracy of the meter itself. Okay? I'm going to back out of here. I'm going to go back one and now what I want to do is a high calibrate which is your top end span value. I'm going to move the shutter to the high cal position. So I've got to take my lock out first. Move it to position two. And you've got to give it some time. It takes time for the radiation to get through and be stable and then you'll get the raw count coming back from the actual detector itself. Uh, right now I can see the, the bar moving up the screen, it's at 43, it's now gone to 45 on the very top line. Um, still going up and I'm going to let it go for a few minutes before I actually uh, do that calibration point. Okay, we've been waiting for about five minutes to let this thing get up to the high cal point and right now it's raw reading is 69.75 which is pretty close to the 70%. But we're just going to go through the process so that you can see how it's done. So I'm going to hit the home key and back out. I I'm up in variables, so I'm going to back out. And then I'm going to go down to calibration. It's the second line from the bottom. And I'm going to go into calibration. And now I'm going to uh, go down to calibrate. Second or third one down. And then I'm going to go to high calibration, which is here, and enter it. And now it wants to know what the calibration density is and we've already set the number in there because it's 70 percent so it's going to calibrate it to 70 percent so we're going to hit calibrate again we hit ok telling it that we put the shutter in the right position the equivalent observer so that's ok and now it's going through and doing its calibration and it says it's calibrating the gauge uh, ho-hum it takes a few minutes for this thing there we are and now it says that the raw count has moved down to 7273, uh, so 7273. So the raw count is less because there's less radiation getting through there because that equivalent absorber is representing a 70% signal. Um, so now we're going to go OK to accept the calibration value and I'll go back to home and uh, variables. I'm going to go into variables and lo and behold I'm sitting now at 71.9 and it'll bounce around up and down a little bit uh, and that's the basic calibration the next step would be to uh, put the main shutter back in again and just let's look at the main shutter this great big hunk of lead that's in here is what is sitting over top or underneath the source when we're in the word close the source is actually shooting through there so that's the block when you move it to the open position, it's actually shooting through this part right in the middle here. See, so it's going down through here. When you put it into the um, standard position, there's for standardizing electronics, it actually uses this little bit less lead for standardizing the electronics. We didn't do that in this procedure because it was already done. Okay, so the next step is to fill the meter back up and then we will put the main shutter back in. And that's gonna take a few moments to do that, so we'll do that on another clip. Okay, so we've closed the drain valve, we've opened the supply valve, we've actually got two pumps online and running, pushing liquid through here, up through here. I'm gonna open this up to drain any air out, gone. And it's pumping upstairs. The meter is now showing 175% because of the fact that we still got the calibration shutter in there. So I'm going to take the cal shutter out. Put the operate shutter back in to the open position. time the meter is now starting to drop it wasn't 175 it's now down to 154 we're gonna let it go for a while so I'm just gonna pause in this video while it gets five minutes to stabilize 
Okay, now we're at the point with the nuclear density gauge that we need to take an online sample and we're going to figure out what that is and then we're going to do a low reference on here to shift this guy down to match the sample that we take. So here's how we take the sample. It's taken very slowly because there's blending happening between that valve, that valve and that valve. And it's on automatic. If you open up too fast, you'll disturb the balance. So I'm gonna take a sample. And when you look at the level rising, it's rising very slowly. I'll turn this around so you can see it against a little graduation. And that's basically what you want, about that speed. Now I'm gonna take this, that's too fast. I didn't mean to do that. Now I'm gonna take my sample, open it up. You dump the first part because you have a dead sample sitting in this line. And so you fill it up to the top graduation mark. And we'll pick it up there and cut her off. Okay, here we are ready to start taking a manual test of the sample. We need a hydrometer, typically in the range of 1.000 to 1.050. Okay. Put the hydrometer in, let it spin. I'm gonna move this over just a little bit so I can get this thermometer in. This is a partial immersion thermometer. So you push it down so that the liquid level is at the immersion line where my fingernail is. So I'm gonna take this guy down. And there it sits. And the indication is at 1.1 five six seven eight so one point one five eight and now you come to the graph of specific gravities of aqueous eth ethylene glycol the apparent specific gravity we need to know the temperature because this graph is set for 60 degrees f currently we are at 70 degrees f there's 60 70 80 so we are at 70. So now, this is the 50 degree line, this is the 100 degree line, so we're uh, two-fifths of the way between these two lines. I said the specific gravity was 1.1, so these go up in 0.2 values, so this is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.81, then we're 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right there and the eight line comes across and right about here is 70 percent that's 70 degrees and we're bang on 20 percent ethylene glycol so you follow the line down whoops hang on oh i'm on the wrong one 1.18 is right there 58158 five, comes across here to 70 degrees 70 degrees looks like about 16% ethylene glycol. So it's four divisions back from the 20%. So that makes it 16. Each one of these is 1%. So we're at 16% ethylene glycol. Currently the controller is in automatic and it is automatically adjusting the, the glycol and the water valves to get us to a 20% mixture. Uh, it thinks that it's about 20% right now. You have to put the controller on manual before you go and adjust it. Otherwise, the controller will try to respond to any adjustments that you're making. So we're gonna just simply go to manual. And now we'll go to the transmitter. Right now I'm on the home page for the transmitter and it's telling me that the incoming measurement is running around 19.3, 19.4 and it's bouncing because of the way the nuclear density gauge works due to the radiation changes. They're, they come off of the surface of the radioactive material 
just like they come off the sun. So you're getting bouncing waves all the time. All right, what we're gonna do is we wanna go into calibration. So I have to go to the home page and calibration is second from the bottom. So I hit the calibrate, go into calibration. And then what I wanna do is I wanna go to uh, calibrate, which is the third line down, one, two, three. And now I hit calibrate and it talks about low reference and that's what I want to do. So I'm going to go a low reference. In here, the set value right now is at 15 and we said we're 16. So I'm going to take and go down to the reference density value, enter in, and it now offers what that value is. So I can go back and change it and I'm going to go from 15 up to 16 and I'm going to go enter. So now we're going to correct it to 16. And I go up to perform the reference calibration. So I'm going to hit that button. And now it tells me that it tells me to put in the equivalent absorber. Well, we're using liquids, not the equivalent absorbers. We've already done that. So now what we need to do is we need to simply say OK. And it's going to calibrate. And now you see it's in the process of calibrating. And this takes a little while, not too bad. And now it's come back and it's told me the raw count that it saw was 71.24. And if I say okay, it's going to make 71.24 raw counts equal 16% ethylene glycol. And I hit okay. And so it's done it now. And then I'm going to go back to home. And basically we've done the low reference so now let's go back over to the control panel and we're going to see that our our density has actually come down because it thought it was 20 and now it thinks it's 16 i hope so now you can see on the display here it's showing us 50. now it's going to bounce up and down to be up and down a couple of percent what i'm going to do is i'm simply going to throw it on automatic and let it now bring that density up to the set point value of 20%. Okay, we're done.